smother both of the children. As hard as that is to say, that, that does appear to what he has indicated, yes. Okay. How much time passed between the death of your daughter Desiree and the death of your stepson Nathaniel? Almost three months. You come home and find your daughter in the hands of your son unresponsive yes. and ultimately pronounced brain dead and, and lost five days later in the hospital. But yet you allowed your son to continue to interact with and in fact supervise, babysit, oversee your 11 month old stepson. Initially, we were told that Desiree may have passed due to medical issues. She was having seizures at the hospital. They were questioning if she had had seizures before, which she had not. Um, but they talked about the potential of the fact that she may have had a seizure and may have choked. Um, and initially, nobody was looking at my son. When we look at your deceased daughter Desiree's autopsy report, it said immediate cause of death was undetermined, diagnosis prolonged cardiac arrest, five-day hospitalization with complications, severe anoxic brain injury with swelling and tonsil herniation, respiratory failure. And then her updated death certificate, which came pursuant to that on April 22nd of 2018, immediate cause asphyxia due to or consequence of smothering manner of death homicide. Have you talked to your son Nicholas about this? Yes, I have. You have described him as being loving and caring and that these children were everything to him, that he, he played with them, laughed. Yes. And, and so this is so counter to that. What, what, have you, what have you said to him the first time you saw him after this? My first reaction was I just wanted to hug him, you know, because it takes a lot of strength to be able to say, I'm responsible for this. And to look your mother in the face and say that I'm the reason for your tears. But he did. And I can't say that I have forgiven him. Um, but I can't say that I blame him 100% either. But I have stayed